Hello, welcome to Investments, Fundamentals of Investments, INV 2601. Today, today, we are going to talk about derivatives. Derivatives are one of those, uh, <laughs> one of the things which when I first heard about and read about derivatives so many moons ago, it was confusing. It was really confusing to say, what are these derivatives? What are we talking about? So I hope after this lecture, the issue of derivatives will start to make a little bit of sense. And as a bonus, I also hope after this lecture, you will be able to calculate different types of derivatives and different interesting questions, which sometimes come in, ex in, a, in an exam. So let's get started. And where do we start? Okay, derivatives. A, we start as always. E, Tembisa, hello Tembisa, I can see you joined. You were almost late. E, okay, let's we start as always. Remember, I can't come and lecture for one and a half hours and think it was worthwhile. We have to participate. So we have that lady, a woman has been saving for years, buying shares for her only child's education. You can see she's trying hard. She's doing all good things. Question. The child is starting school next year. You can see that's why she's that woman in the picture. That's why she's trying so hard. The child is sleeping, but the hour the mother is trying. <laughs> <laughs> what would be a concern? She has, she has been saving for this child's education, but she was buying shares. The child is starting school next year. What would be a immediate concern? Put it in the chat. Put in the chat. The problem with having four students in a lecture is, is too, it's a, some feel is too intimate because then I can just say, if, if Helen isn't posted, I would just say, Helen, what's happening? So that's some students feel being pressurized, but how else <laughs> can we go? <laughs> in one of the lectures, I had four, I think four or five students in one, one module. Of course, if there are four or five students, then if you haven't posted, I can see who hasn't posted it. I will say, Israel. Where is your post? I did that twice. And then the third time, ah, the student was gone. <laughs> ah, so I said to myself, ah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, guys, child starting school next year, what would be a concern? She has the fees, but she, the, it's saved in shares. What would be her immediate concern? Okay. Let's say, I, I'm preparing you so that you know that if you haven't posted, I'm going to call on you. So Norma, we just started, which is a good thing. Patricia, welcome. We just started, which is a good thing. We have a lady there, woman has been saving, buying shares for the only child's education. The baby is starting school next year. What would be her immediate concern? Put in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, put it in the chat. Hi, welcome, Sandile. It's good to see you. A woman has been saving money for to buy shares for only child's education. The child is starting school next year. What would be her immediate concern? Put in the chat. And I was telling before Norma, Patricia, and Sandile joined, I was saying the class is small. In the, there are too few people. So I will call on people if you haven't posted in the chat. And some of you very pressurized. Unfortunately. It's a good thing you came. And I think it, it adds a lot of value to participate. Therefore, I will call on you. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Nyamunda. Yes, precious. <laughs> I don't think I, get, I don't know how to write this or how to explain it, but I think one of her concerns will be the price of the shares, whether she'll be selling at a profit or a loss, depending with the market performance. Okay, price of the shares. So I'll put in the chat price of the shares, price of the shares, price of the shares. That's precious. 
So we are waiting for Patricia Noma and Sandile. Noma is writing, Patricia is writing. Sandile is thinking. It's good to have a small class. I, I always I think it's a, it's beneficial if you come to a even smaller class because then you can there is more chance for interaction. The other module which I teach, I have 172 students. What are the chances that I will have interaction with anyone? I always have interaction with one or two people. The rest is just in the sea of people. But it's just two, four, six, eight people. Eight people we can talk, we can ask a question anytime. Not too many rules. Tembiza. How are you? Okay. So let's see what people are saying here. The Tembiza interest is four. And lose them. Why interest rates Tembisa? Helen says if she will have enough money for her savings to cover her child, yes, yes, you are pointing in the right direction. Is now will I have sufficient savings to find my child? So yes, pointing in the right direction. Is now price of shares will fall. That's okay. Someone should give a big heart there because if I put there, that was precious. Precious can give yourself a big heart. If I put there, it looks like I'm thumbing up myself. <laughs> Patricia says growth of the investment, mm -hmm. right direction. No matter the equation will be fluctuation of interest rates. I don't know why interest rates because she's saving in shares. Okay, let me pull, look for my pointer. Pointers. She's saving. She's buying shares. So now she's worried about the price of shares. This a nicely said investment yield will fall. <laughs> you are thinking too hard. So the concern, like what Prisha said, she is investing in shares. What if the price of shares fall? That would be her main concern. So that's kind of the thing which derivatives help. So we say derivatives are a financial asset whose value is derived from another financial asset. So a derivative, it, it, it's like, it's like what, what we see, you know, that plant which grows on another plant. So you don't have a derivative if you don't have an underlying asset. You can only have a derivative if you have an underlying asset like shares, then you have a derivative on shares. We say derivatives are used for speculation. Speculation, you are thinking the price of the of the underlying investment is going to change rapidly, then you can buy a derivative. You would say risk management. That woman who was worried about her child's education next year, she could buy a derivative to make sure that the price of those shares will not be below her desired price when she sells in order to pay for her child's education. Nice, that was nice. But you know what? I actually have a video which I share this time. I, I will share nicely because I want us to understand what derivatives are. So there's a it's a longish, you know, four minutes in a lecture is a long time because four minutes I might be crying for those four minutes towards the end. Okay, let's go for it. I know what you are all thinking. What? What does that even mean? So I'm going to tell you the story of my friend Ramu, the farmer to help you understand derivatives better. My friend Ramu is a farmer who raises cattle. He has 10 cows and wants to sell them in the market one year from now. He knows he will spend 30 rupees per cow to raise them. So his total investment will be 300 rupees. But now he's worried that if another spell of mad cow disease breaks out, he won't get much money for his cattle when he decides to sell them. So. To protect his business, Ramu meets an investor's broker and enters a business contract with him. You are the investor who has sent your broker to Ramu. You may think that mad cow disease is not likely to occur. So you tell your broker to agree to pay Ramu 100 rupees per cow one year from now, irrespective of the market price. What you've just done is entered a futures contract. Basically, Futures are contracts that obligate the buyer to buy an asset and the seller to sell the asset at a predetermined future date and price. In this case, 
the futures contract obligates Ramu to sell his 10 cows to you at 100 rupees per cow one year from now and obligates you to buy them then at that price. Ramu agrees to this because this means that one year from now, whatever the market price is, he will get a profit of 100 rupees minus 30 rupees, that is 70 rupees per cow. He has limited his risk and locked in his profit. Ramu is playing it safe and it works out well for him. But what about you? If you're right and mad cow disease does not break out, let's see what position you'll be in one year from now. One year from now, the price of cows in the open market may even soar to 200 rupees per cow. This means that you will buy his cows for 100 rupees per cow and sell them in the open market for 200 rupees, making a profit of 100 rupees per cow or 1000 rupees on an investment of 1000 rupees. Wow! This is all pretty clear sailing so far, right? Right! But hang on a second. But what if you are wrong and there is a spell of mad cow disease? In this situation, the market price could drop to even 20 rupees a cow. Uh-oh, this spells trouble for you. This means you will have to pay 100 rupees for each cow and be able to sell them for only 20 rupees per cow. Which means you will make a loss of 80 rupees per cow or 800 rupees on an investment of 1000 rupees. Hmm. Yes, that's a huge risk to take. So is there a way that as an investor, you can limit your risk? Like okay, the rest is um, important, but not necessary for our lecture today. Okay. So you were talking about futures and forwards. Okay. So to just as a preliminary thing, let's discuss what we call the, a few terms, which you might not remember, but you will meet them most likely today or when you are when you are studying on your own some terms which are important for derivatives hedging hedging if it's like when, when you say you hedge your bets you are trying to reduce your exposure to risk so that's hedging so you hedge by reducing your exposure to risk and then when you say speculate when i spoke about speculation short selling definitely you are going to meet the term short selling Short selling, you are selling a, 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 an investment which you do not own. Let's say, okay, Helen, Helen, I'll make Helen our leader. I, I usually prefer to have a leader in, in every class because if I have a leader, then I can ask, like when I was saying sound there, I can ask, I can say, Helen, Helen is our leader today. He, he, so when it's short selling, I go to Helen. Okay, now I can use a, a, a real person's name. That's that's a good thing of having a leader in the class. Okay, I go. So let's say Helen is is holding all much more shares. She is buying them. Maybe she's preparing for her trip to Hawaii in three years' time. So she's buying shares slowly, 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 slowly. But I think there is the old much more share is going to increase in price. In a short period of time, I don't have old much shares, but I want to take advantage of the increase in price. So Helen doesn't want to trade with the shares because she's holding them for her trip to Hawaii. So I'll go to Helen and say, Helen, can you lend me your shares? Helen says, Ah, oh, sure, doc, I can lend you my shares. She gives me 100 shares. I take those shares and I sell them. Three weeks from now, me, clever me, the old mutual price goes up. So it was 100 rand when I sold them. They, okay, no, 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 no. That's in price, yes, sir. Okay. So the uh, old mutual shares are currently selling for 100 rand. I go, I am expecting the share price to fall in three weeks' time. So I go to Helen. Helen, can you lend me 100 shares? Yes, she lends me 100 shares. I sell the 100 shares. How much do I get? I think I get. 100 times 100, 10,000 in my pocket. Three weeks from now, the price of old mutual shares falls to 90 rand. So what do I do? I go back to the market, buy shares, old mutual shares for 90 rand per share, which is 9,000. 
I give back hell and ashes. Yeah, but you know what just happened there? I just made a thousand runs. Put in my pocket. I'm so happy. I'm so clever. Okay, that's short selling. You are selling a security you do not own. So when you say someone is long in an asset, it's a way of saying Helen is long in old mutual, which means she's just holding old mutual shares. So we have three types of derivatives. So we have futures and forwards, which we are going to talk about shortly. We have options, which we are going to talk about. And if we are lucky, we'll talk about interest rate swaps. If we move very fast, So that's what we're doing. So futures and forwards. So a future, a forward is an agreement between parties to buy or sell an asset. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. In a specified blah, 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 blah. Okay. So let's say, let's use a proper example. So we have two people here. We have Tando and we have Tumi, these two ladies. Tando is is holding capital shares. So she's saying the price of shares I will get when I want to sell next year might fall. And if that the share price falls, I will be ruined. How can I protect myself? That's done in the shares. But on the other hand, we have to me. Tumi doesn't have capital shares, but she believes our oh, next year the price of capital shares is going to skyrocket. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be great. But I don't want to buy them. So what can they do, these two ladies? They have completely opposing ideas about the future. So Tando can sell a forward contract to Tumi. Okay. So when you ship sells a forward contract, let's say the capital share currently is selling at 200 rands. And she turned or goes and says, ah, you know what, Tumi, if you, you agree to pay me 200 rands next year, when I want to sell my shares, Tumi says, of course, I'll pay you 200 rands. When they do that, they have and that what we call the forward contract. That's a forward contract. But a futures contract it works in a similar way. The only difference being it's exchange traded. So it's no longer an agreement between Tando and Tumi. Now Tando, instead of going to Tumi, she goes and buys a forward contract on an exchange, like the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Ah, no, no, it's called not stock exchange, Joanne's the securities exchange. Yes. That's the only difference between the forward and a future. So to find the price of a future, it's very simple. We are saying the price of a future is close to the spot price. Spot price, ladies and gentlemen, is like saying current price. So spot price one plus R, R is the risk-free rate, T is maturity. So let's say, let's do an example. As always, an example will help. A 10-month futures contract is ended when the share price is 100 rand and the risk-free is 10%. What is the futures price? Oh, of course, it's easy. 100 times one plus 10% is equals to 1.1. Ladies and gentlemen, this sometimes confuses people. 1 plus 0 0.1 is equal to 1.1. To the power of, ladies and gentlemen, 10 over 12. Also confusing people sometimes, they say, how do I say to the power of 10 over 12? My calculator can't even do that. What you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is you can say 10 divided by 12. You find an answer, you write it somewhere. Then you can say... 1.1 to the power of that, the whatever decimal places you have times 100, it will give you 108. But don't worry about that 108. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's, I don't know why I don't have an example. Okay, what about it later? I don't know why I don't have an example. I was supposed to have an example there. Okay, so now let's talk about arbitrage. Okay. Arbitrage is your ability to earn a riskless profit, okay? Meaningless. Meaningless, completely meaningless. But okay, let's give an example. So let's say one day you are walking down the street. You are in here, here in Deben, you are in Amshlanga, you are there in Gateway, walking around. 
You go to a net bank branch and you see US dollars. They are buying US dollars for 1690, but they are selling them for 1680. So you walk uh, a few a few shops down the down the gateway, you find FNB. They are actually buying the same US dollars for 1690. You say mm, something wrong there. I can actually do something. Hey, yes, you can do something. You can go and buy the US dollars from Ned Bank and come and sell them to FNB immediately. Every time you do that, you are making 10 cents. So you keep on doing that. You keep on doing that because of this misprice. You keep on doing that. And when you see that opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, please phone me in the process. Phone me. Oh, you know what, Doc? We found an opportunity to make free money. So that free money you can make in the market is called arbitrage. But in reality, the markets don't really, oh, my, my, my slides are so messed up. The markets don't really work like that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. I was looking at the slides just now and they were not messed up. All of a sudden, they are looking messed up. Okay. Okay, let's, I want to move this thing to here. <laughs> okay, so, but in reality, ladies and gentlemen, the market don't work as simply as this. You will not go, you will not go into Gateway and find out oh, he's that being selling at 1680. FNB is back at 16. Oh, that's too easy. People will get medley rich easily. Rich. It's a little bit complicated because now we are saying, how do we see an arbitrage opportunity when we are using futures, future prices? So let's say you okay now this time is slightly more complicated. Let's say you walk into into gateway, same place into gateway, and the price. So Jake, okay, let's do this example. Jake believes he is identified arbitrary. Blah, 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 blah. The spot price, remember, spot price current price is one twenty. The futures price is one twenty five. One year interest is eight percent. You say, hmm. I can't see an, a, an arbitrage opportunity there. So to find an arbitrage opportunity, what you can do, you are trying to find to say, is it is the futures contract correctly priced? So what you then do, this is the same information. So you say, remember we said the futures price is equals to one plus, oh, I don't even have that formula at all here. Hmm. Interesting. I know it will be confusing without the formula. The formula is, is here. I'll go and get the formula so that we are all together. We are all together. We are all together. Let's see. It will be confusing with that form without that formula. Without that formula, it will be so confusing. I'll do this and I'll do this. And since I can't change who I am, I will do this. I can try. Okay, so the formula, ladies and gentlemen, remember our formula for futures price is spot price one plus R the power of T. So in this case, spot price is one twenty one point zero eight eight percent. That's the R to the power of T. Why is it one to the power of one? Because it matures in one year. So we see when we do that, we find one twenty nine. Then we look. We say, okay, the actual theoretical price. Theoretical price of this future is 129. Therefore, yes, but in the market it's 125. Yes, there's an arbitrage opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, this one is yours. Do this calculation. Yes, so that you can identify whether there's an arbitrage opportunity or not. Okay. Well, while we are doing that, let me knitted my work. And when you find the answer, ladies and gentlemen, please put post in the chat. Okay, that looks better. Save. So you are finding, you are finding, 
okay uh, let's say find the theoretical futures price and decide whether there is an arbitrage opportunity that's what they're trying to do here so you say option one yes there's an arbitrage opportunity no there's no arbitrage opportunity then post in the chat let's do that let's do that so i fixed my question now is clear copy that copy that paste it here so that everything is moving nicely okay let's see if there's something in the chat which i'm not looking at oh, okay we have people tembisa sand delay okay let's go let's go our leader helen remember our leader is helen ladies and gentlemen let's post let's post we are too few so you will be under pressure okay let me shut up so that people get concentrated Then beside the sand delay, should I, they, you should tell me whether there's an arbitrage opportunity there. Oh, Mr. Matsuma, how are you? I'm good, Sensei. How are you, Dr. Nyamunda? Good. We are trying. We have, we have a few few students, but we have, it's good to have people. Nine. Yeah, at least. At least we have people to talk to. Yes. Okay, I'll make you a presenter here so that we can go nicely, okay? Let's see how many people are responding there. Tembisa, yes. Sandile, DPO Mukwena, yes. Noma, yes. Precious, yes. E... Patricia, I don't see your name here. Meaning you haven't posted anything. If you are struggling with anything, ladies and gentlemen, the intention of you coming instead of just waiting for the recording is so that you can, if you are struggling with anything, you can ask. Okay, Patricia posted. Verosha, I think I didn't see your name on there. Verosha, is there anything? Where are you? How far are you? Yes, Ellen. Um, I'm struggling when I want to multiply uh, with the power. How do I go about? Because um, I did get 0 0.5, mm -hmm. 6 divided by 12, 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. And then I said um, 1 point, 1 point, 0 0.4. Um, 0 4 Mm. to the power i'm using the sharp calculator it isn't there why to the power of x yes i, I do do i say 1.04 times y no, 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 not equal to times so 1.04 y to the power of x i think then it will give you a, the thing which is like an arrow pointing up okay and then i say 0.5 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.5, yeah. Then it gives you that, then it says times the spot price. Oh, okay, because I've been... <laughs> You've been fighting with it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. I can see so many interesting prizes there. Let's see. There we go. So we are saying the correct answer. Precious got it on the button, on the button. Huh. Interestingly enough, my options don't have the correct answer. <laughs> 2.45 pressures is the correct answer. Noma is the correct answer. 
DPO correct answer. Sandile, I don't know where you or you got that answer. You just said okay, 2.7 looks right. E, Tembisa, correct answer. The only thing which is missing for some of you, okay, uh, Tembisa said, yeah. E, greater than the okay, so perfect. Perfect. Now you know how to, to, to identify an arbitrage opportunity. So we take a next step. So we say, okay, I won't, I won't bother. This will be confusing without a good example. Okay. So we have, this is to try and illustrate how you can take advantage of an arbitrage opportunity. Helen, please put your hand down so that he, he, I can see when your new hand is up. Okay, so Jake believes there's, a, a bit, there's no arbitrage opportunity for a commodity with the following information. Spot price, I think it's the same one which we did, 120. Uh, futures price is 125, 8%. So we say, yes, there is an arbitrage opportunity by saying 120 times 1.08 to the power of 1, 129.6, which is greater than 125. Now your level question, Okay. Your level question, how do you exploit the arbitrage opportunity? You have identified that there's a mispricing here. So we, what you then do is you buy the futures contract. Why are you buying the futures contract? Because you want to say at maturity, you want to be able to, to sell, to buy at 125. So then you short the asset. Short, remember shorting, I was explaining shorting before. You borrow and sell the asset. So you short the asset. Then you invest the 120 from the asset which you shorted. I don't know whether it's correct to say shorted. Or you sold. So you get your 120 times 1. So you get your 128, 129.60. So at maturity, what do you do? You buy the asset. How do you buy the asset? Because you can buy it at 125 and then collect the return. So you make a riskless profit of 129 minus 125. It's called a reverse cash and carry strategy. So the first step, ladies and gentlemen, you identify if the futures price is equal to that. If it's different, then there's an arbitrage opportunity. If the futures price is greater, your theoretical future, the one you calculate is greater than the, the actual one. Therefore, you buy the contract, short the asset, and invest. Okay. You say, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> Here's your question. <laughs> so whatever we're looking at is exactly here at the top. So my the intention here is to say, okay, now this is yours. So you calculate the theoretical futures price. I hope this one is correct. Okay, let me, I'll in the meantime, I'll, but don't worry about my options here if they are wrong. You put your option, the answer you get, and then you say, how do you exploit the, the arbitrage opportunity? Here is how I have, so the blue is the calculation, then this is how I exploit it, and then maturity, this is what happens. So you tell me, what do you do to exploit the arbitrage? Okay, let me keep quiet. Let me keep quiet and just test if my answer is correct. And how do you exploit? Tim, besides, see you got the answer quickly. How do you exploit the arbitrage? Put it in the chat.
Now, how do you exploit the arbitrage? So the question, how do you exploit the arbitrage? That's your level question. That's a question at the level which you can get in the exam. Norma, how do you exploit the arbitrage? Put in the chat. Patricia, how do you exploit the arbitrage? Put in the chat. It looks like we are making good progress. I can see we are on slide number 18 and it's only 907. We are making really good pro progress, really good progress. We might even be able to watch another video. We might. It's tempting. Our leader, ladies and gentlemen, is Helen Maseko. Okay. I've one thing I learned recently. Da, da, da. Ah, we have few people actually. It's not many people we've posted. Please, if you have a question, ladies and gentlemen, the opportunity is to post in the chat. One thing I learned even as recently as yesterday, I'm always learning these new things. Is the the class might be going very well like this, but there are people who are frustrated in the class, and you know what they do? They don't say anything. <laughs> but they will go on a WhatsApp group and say, we don't like the way he does things. I say, on a WhatsApp group, I'm not even on the WhatsApp group. How does it help me? That how does it help you as a, as a scholar or as a student? It doesn't help. The chance is to say it now, where we can actually do something. No, you are moving too fast, you are moving too slow. Then we can bet it around and then find solutions. Yeah, but people are people. That's life. It's good. The good thing is I learned something. <laughs> Verosha, how do you exploit the arbitrage opportunity? Okay, let's see. Okay, Patricia has already said something. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move on. 137.80, option three. So we are going to do the story about the reverse case and carry sales port, invest proceeds, buy futures. Anyone with a question? Anyone with a question? Ladies and gentlemen, we move, we go, and we talk about options, okay? I hope we are not here yet. <laughs> yes, Noma. Uh, sorry, sir, to take you back. I just wanted to get the confirmation on how do we actually exploit the arbitrage. So we buy the futures contract, which locks in the price at 100. Then we sell the spot at 130. At maturity, you get 137. So that 137, then you go and buy the asset at 100. So then you can explore, then you say 100 by 100, then you can, I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. I just wanted to see if I'm on the Thank right you. track. Thank you. So you can see the, 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 the slide there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the ETMBs are don't even start with the leader. The leader is doing a job. Okay, I hope you are not there. <laughs> I don't know why I have this slide again. <laughs> so we have two types. Oh, I don't know. Actually, maybe we need it. No, the wrong slide. 
We don't need that slide. It's a repeat slide. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two types of, there's a slide which is missing. That slide was supposed to be another slide, which I don't have. He, the, the, now, now when we're talking option, there are two types of options. There's what we put option and the call option. So I'll just jump straight into what we call a put option. So a put option gives the world that the right, but not obligation to sell an asset at an agreed price on a specific date. Okay, so there are also two types of options. There are what we call European options and American options. So European options, you can only exercise at maturity. American options, you can exercise at any time. So most of the times when we do these options, we are doing European options because the European options, we, at least we can know with definitely the maturity price or the strike price and the maturity date, okay? That out of the way. So that slide which is missing now is so there now in your heads. But let's do an example so that we can see how a put option works. So remember we said the problem with futures and forwards is that you are obliged to transact at maturity. Okay. Now we have Tando. Remember Tando and the capital shares. Remember Tando is holding capital shares. So the price of capital shares I have will fall and I'll be ruined. Remember that was the original worry. But now she says, whoa, 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 but I don't know that. What if the price actually increases? That's Tando. So I don't want that forward contract because if, I, if the price increases, I don't want to sell it a disadvantage. So what does she do? She buys the put contract. So the put contract will give you a right to sell at an agreed price. On an agreed date. But it will not oblige you. It will not force you to sell. So in this case, we are saying, as an example, let's say capital share price is 20 rand today, which is the spot price. Remember spot price is price today? Then in the market, you can turn to can go and say, okay, I want to say if the agreed price at maturity is 1750, I can't do below that. I can't let my price go below 1750. So what do I do? I go buy a put option. It one run thing because to get a right but not obligation, you have to pay something. So this thing is called an option premium. That's the cost. Question. So remember, you have a right to, to, to exercise if it's advantageous to you, but you are not obliged. So if it's not advantageous to you, you don't exercise the option. So this is a put option. We are saying, what is the decision for Tando if the ending price is 14 rand? In this case, remember, spot price is there, agreed price is there, there. Is she going? So we have two options. Exercise the option as it is profitable for her. Do not exercise the option. So what is her decision if the ending price is 14 rand? Can just put in the chat, exercise, do not exercise, exercise. So that I can see if we are, if we are still together, if we're working together nicely, the end in the end, end in the end, on the beach front, life is good. Is she going to exercise or not exercise? Make your choice. So two options, exercise, not exercise. I'm expecting everyone to say something. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a calculation, so I'm expecting everybody to say something. Two options, exercise, do not exercise. Exercise, do not exercise. Remember, my thing is, I don't want people to come and sit because they don't benefit a lot. I want you to make a bet and say, oh, yeah, I'll exercise. Don't exercise. Then so that when I explain, then you are listening. Exercise, do not exercise. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you say do not exercise, it's wrong. <laughs> she should exercise because if she exercises, she can sell the shares at 17 rand 50. 
instead of selling it 14 rands. <laughs> so you want you not to make this and then sell the other shares at 14 rand and make it instead of selling it for 70 rand, okay? Forgiven. I completely forgive you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> what is the decision? This is the next question. Question number two. I'll call this question number two. You can see where my point is. What is the decision for Daniel? If the ending price is 21 rand, is it exercise the option or do not exercise the option? <laughs> Remember, the agreed price is still 17 rand with the option price 150. So in this second option, it's 21 rand. Exercise, do not exercise. Everyone, okay, now everyone is scared. <laughs> Sandy is not scared. <laughs> make your choice, ladies and gentlemen. I like it when you make a choice. Because at least then we are learning. Ladies and gentlemen, we learn when we make mistakes. When that student is yesterday said, I don't like the way he teaches. For the first time I learned something in a long time. <laughs> Patricia, oh, Patricia has already said something. <laughs> Tell me is thinking hard. <laughs> Too hard. <laughs> Exercise. Yeah, I yeah. I actually lost all of you because I don't even know what's the next question now. <laughs> yeah, this one. This one. Bullet point number two. Okay, let me do this. Let me do this in case you are not the only one who is a little bit off, offish. Off the way we are. Okay. There we are. So we are saying bullet point one. Uh, bullet point two. When I come back there, I'll then bullet point three. Oh, now it's better. Now it's clear. Now Tim decides you can make a choice. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you say it, do not exercise, 100%, 100%, because now instead of selling at maturity, instead of selling at 17 rand 50, Tando can sell in the market at 21 rands. Okay? So the second option is do not exercise. This is a put option. She's holding the shares. She goes in the market. She sells at 21 rand. That's it. She is not going to, uh, I wanted to, to, to write the, the informal language, but let's say we stay with the formal language. She is not going to play around with this 1750 because she can sell her shares at 21 rand. Next question. What is Tando's profit if she exercised the option at 14 rands? What profit is she going to make if she was to exercise the option at 14 rands? Profit or loss? Is it 3 rand 50 or is it 2 rand? You don't need the formula. Just, just in, it's something which you can actually work out. If it's a simple calculation, this minus this. Plus that. Okay. It's actually a good thing to say 350 loss or profit, loss or profit. <laughs> Make your, ladies and gentlemen, I expect everyone to say something because this is, you can actually just choose. <laughs> What is the profit or loss? 350 or 2 rand? Okay. Let's see. Okay, Patricia has said something. Wandumzi. Ah, Wandumzi has said something. Ah, how come with all the other names are high? Let me do this so that I can see more names. Only Daniel said something. Let's see Israel. Israel, did Israel say anything here? Israel. Israel, you haven't said anything yet. 
for this question. Oh, Poulain, what's happening there, Poulain? Why are you ignoring me like that? Make your choice, 350 or 2 rand, profit or loss. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move. Let's move. So it is. So I'm sure I don't have the name. I'm sure I didn't. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course, this time we are yeah, going to, <laughs> to be listening very closely. So she will exercise that tick. She will exercise the option because she wants to get 17 rand 50. So then we say 17 rand 50, this one, minus 14 rand. 350, don't celebrate yet. For those who got 350, don't celebrate yet. Remember, for that option, she paid a premium of 150. So she made a profit of 350, but minus 150. So actually, is a profit of two runs. Precious. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wi-Fi. Load shading started. Sorry, sorry. Mine, I don't think mine is starting because I think we are in load stage three. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I forgive you if you said 350. <laughs> Completely forgiven. But the next slide, no forgiveness. <laughs> okay. So, the next thing we are going to talk about is a call option. <laughs> okay, I said, no, I didn't I say I forgive you already. <laughs> if you made a mistake, I forgive you. But on this slide, forgiveness is not granted. <laughs> okay, now we are talking about to me. So to me, remember in our initial example, to me doesn't have the capital share. She thinks capital is doing great stuff. Their share price will rise. But she says, hmm, hmm. I can't really know whether that will rise or not. I am expecting it to rise, but what if it doesn't? So I can't buy a forward contract. So she buys what we call a call option, which gives you a right, not obligation. This is not to sell, to buy an asset at an agreed price on an agreed date. Okay, so call option gives the holder of the option a right to buy. At an agreed price. Buy. A put option gives the holder the right to sell. So this time is buy. Okay. Let's go through what we did before. So the current capital share is 20 rand. Agreed price is no longer 17.50. So strike price is 21 rand 50. Option premium is still 1 rand 50. So what is the decision for to me if the ending price is 25? Will she exercise or not exercise? Back to the two options, exercise or not exercise. Exercise or not exercise. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Exercise or not exercise. Those are the only answers I'm expecting in the chat. Exercise or not exercise. If the ending price is 25, exercise or not exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all you need to choose. No, don't exercise, exercise, do not exercise. That's all you need to choose. Nothing more, no calculation needed. Remember, a call option, right to buy it in a great price. That's what we said here. And to me is holding a call option. Exercise or not exercise. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pulling again, okay? I'm happy, I'm happy. I can see pulling, I can see Wandumzi, I can see Isra. I can see, I can see Verosha. I can't see Verosha. Verosha is thinking too hard. Verosha is thinking too hard. They're either thinking too hard or she's just ignoring me. Noma can't see. Ah, yeah, Noma can't see. You didn't see anything. I can only see your, your, your brown eyed face in there. Okay. Exercise or not exercise? Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, she will exercise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she has to exercise because she can go buy at 21.50. And you know what she can immediately do? 
go immediately to the market and sell at 25 francs. If she does that, she is in business. So she will go buy, she will exercise, go buy a 2150 because the market price is 25 francs. Okay? That one, I'll give you an extra forgiveness for that one if you didn't get it right. Now, point number two. If the ending price is 19, will she exercise or not exercise? Let's go and read number like Tembisa was not yet with that numbering, which was unclear. So it will be bullet point that this number two. If the ending price is 19, right, will she exercise or not exercise? Exercise or not exercise? Those are the only two options. Exercise, not exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, two options only. Exercise, not exercise. Will she exercise the option? Okay. Exercise, not exercise. Why we are spending time doing this is because these fundamentals, because that's, these are the fundamentals you need to grasp before we do all the other clever things. Okay. Going once, ladies and gentlemen, going twice. You can go on, on those groups and say, I don't like the way it teaches. It's still allowed. Only that I learned that yesterday. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, looks like everyone is saying, no, 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 no. Don't exercise. Why would she go and, uh, is she go, is she go and, ah, uh, 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 uh. if it's, what are we saying here? What decision is the ending price? Yeah, yeah, it's not exercise. Not exercise. True. 100%. Number three, what is to miss profit or loss? She exercise the option at 25. What is a profit or loss? Is it 350 or 222 right? What is a profit or loss? What is a profit or loss? Let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't put a formula there. This is a formula in your head because it's the only three numbers they are subtracting. Profit or loss, how much? Three rand fifty, two rand. Three rand fifty, two rand. Make your choice, make your choice, make your choice. Put your the mistake your choice on something. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like from the looks of things, you have gotten the idea. Okay. I will not show you that video. I will put when I send the slide, that video will be there because I don't want to cry for that time. If we finish and we still have five minutes or so, then I might we might go back and watch the, the one of those videos. Okay. But we'll continue with the theory. So we say. Now that we have an idea of what a core, core option and a put option is, so we look and look at the payoff, payoff graphs. So now you have an idea, you know when to exercise, not to exercise. You, I think you have a decent idea. So we say a call option benefits when prices are increased. So when then we have our profit here and our loss at the bottom. So we are saying as long as price is below the strike price, which is the agreed price, as long as price is still below that, if you hold a call option, you are losing money. Then you get to strike price. If you are holding, the, your loss reduces. Then you get to break even point. Where, so once, once the price, the price is equal to or greater than the strike price, you are going to exercise because it will reduce your loss. Then you get to break even. And then you keep on increasing your profit as long as the price of the underlying asset is increasing. This is what we call a payoff. I think you saw it. If you look in your in your in your textbook, I think you'll see a payoff graph. I don't know whether it's looking organized as this one. 
that would try to draw this thing. So for a put option is the is the opposite. Same idea. There's a loss at the bottom. So when prices are falling before the strike price, you are losing the premium. When you get the price strike price, then your loss is reducing. You get to this to to the break even point as long as the price is reducing. You are in the money. So from here going up, we call it out of the money from here. And from there, going backwards in the money. So it swap is the same story. From here, going down out of the money from there. In, so you say the, 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 the option was in the money. The option was out of the money. That's what they are saying. It was profitable or not profitable. Okay. Now I'm just testing the, your understanding of the theory. I am a farmer and I'm worried that the price of beef will fall in a year's time when I want to sell my cattle. Therefore, A or B. Therefore, A or B. That's yours. And if you want to write the whole sentence, or you can just say A or B. Make your choice. No calculation needed. This is just to, to test theory so that you understand how options work. A or B. There's no reason why anyone should not should not answer that question because it's really theoretical. There could be a good reason actually. Like they don't want to answer it. <laughs> that's that's a good reason. But if you ask me, then I, I don't think it's a good reason. But it is a good reason actually. I don't want to answer it. Okay, let's see. I'm just fiddling with my slides. Let's see how many people have answered. Let's see. Let's see. A, A, A. Okay, okay, okay. So A, B, B, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, 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 A, 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 B, B. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So the actual answer is the put option. The giveaway in this question is to say, I am a farmer and I'm the price of beef will fall next year when I want to sell. So you are holding the underlying assets. That's a giveaway. Therefore, if I'm holding an underlying asset, usually I need to do the put option. But when Mr. Mansoma asks this question in the exam, sometimes he mixes both. With the, oh, no, then it becomes exciting. But as long as you understand the fundamentals. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alex, yes, yes, that is sorry. On yes. the previous question, yes, so maybe how can you explain how the call option would be a disadvantage? Then it clears the confusion of why we chose or the people chose B rather than A. E okay. Do you have any ideas there, or should, should I just give it a shot? Kembisa, do you have an idea of how to explain it or should I just give it a shot? Yes, please, you do give it, you give it a shot because remember, I am monkey see, monkey do. I mean, I kind of like get it that it's A, but I mean, I don't have the deeper understanding. Deeper understanding. Okay, let's, let's ask Puleng, maybe Puleng comes with a solution or similar way. Puleng. Doctor, yes. Um, I think, uh, like you said, it 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 gives it away when the selling comes into into play because when you are dealing with the put option, it's a person who is um, selling whatever they have, whatever. Um, in in this case, um, his kettles. It's not like he wants the he wants to buy because the call option is 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 regarding the buying of um, either securities or whatever the case may be. And the put option is when you are, is from the seller's point of view. I'm not sure if I'm making sense. I'm liking your explanation. I like your explanation a lot. But the question of the, the explanation, whether it makes sense, let's ask Tembisa where the quick. Tembisa, are you happy with the explanation? Yes, perfect, perfect. See? I can get some people to earn me some money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
This now is your question. Alex has bought a put option for five for five runs and the strike price is 55. At maturity, the spot price of the share is 49 runs. Calculate the profit or loss of the put option. What is the corresponding profit or loss of the writer of the option? The first part you should be able to calculate easily, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that's yours. Now, now I can ask you that question clean, my conscience clean. Because I'm sure you now understand the theory. So my conscience might be clean, but maybe my explanation is not. But if you could argue, you could have calculated this already before, after a long explanation. So now you're just shooting to the question. And you know what? When you get the answer, don't be shy. Put in the chat. Patricia already volunteered. Since I'm just sitting here, I'll big, give a big heart to Patricia. Big heart. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm just giving a big heart. Patricia, your next question is, what is the corresponding profit or loss to the writer? Then he's going to say writer profit of so much or writer loss of so much. Let's go, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Verosha, she has been ignoring me for too long. I'm feeling so ignored. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And what is the corresponding profit or loss to the writer? Corresponding profit or loss to the writer. 38. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. So the first step is decision. Exercise the put option. Why we exercise the put option? As it is. So we are saying, Alex has got a put option for five grand. The strike price is 55 at maturity. It's a put option. Did it, was it a put option or a call option? I think it was a put option. Who knows? Because some, some of my slides get confusing, confused by themselves. So it was 49. Calculate the profit or loss for the put holder. So it's 55 minus 49 minus 5. One that I can see wide awake. All of you wide awake. So profit to the holder is one rand. Loss to the writer is one rand. Then comes this interesting term, which you sometimes see in the textbook or in the module. Options are a zero sum game. That's all I wanted to say for this question. Options are zero sum game. Why? Because the profit of the holder is equal to the loss of the writer. The profit of the writer is equal to the loss of the holder. Therefore, Options are a zero sum game. That's a theory we will, you will see. You see, it's a zero sum game. So if your profit as a holder is one rand, the loss of the writer is one rand. That's why we call it a zero sum game. Okay, I gave you something to talk about it, Brian. <laughs> even if the writer did not pay, yes, even if the writer did not pay a premium. Because he's either going to pay or he's going to just keep the, 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 the premium. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this one. This one is yours. You wish to get exposure to a specific share. Suppose you buy coal with a strike of 70 and the price is 675. Calculate the effective price paid to purchase. If you bought the share, oh, now this is, uh, it emphasizes running away from us. He bought the share price, then blah, 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 blah. This is more like this, Mr. Matsoma. He might be excited to ask you a question like this one.
Then this you can hang around 20 minutes. Only 20 minutes and we are done. Call them to ask them to pause to, for 20 minutes. This one is yours. After this, then you do put cooperative, I think. Let me go and look. Yeah. After this, put cooperative two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, so that you get that, and then you do put cooperative, and then we call it a day. Then you can proudly call it a day. I don't know. I will proudly call it a day because I mean, happy people are getting right answers, but I don't know whether you will proudly call it a day. This is a little bit more involved. You tell me that I can't go in before you post this answer. <laughs> That's what gets me into trouble. Because when I talk like that, some people take it too hard, too much too hard, and they say, oh, no, 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 but it's pushy. Ah, if you say I'm pushy, you're right. <laughs> Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, if you say I am pushy, I will say you, how do you know me? Then these are no going without the answer. <laughs> Just said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can go if you want. You have the answer. But if you want to talk about, I think you had the put co parity question some weeks back. I'm such a young man. I can remember all these things. 23 is my age. If in case you, you, were doubt, you were wondering my age. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Let's go. Let's go so that we can do put co parity. Actually, people were right. So, okay, so what do you do? Don't exercise the option, the call option. Why? You wish to get exposure to a specific share. Suppose you buy a call with a stack of that, the price is 70, come with effective if the, So because this price is lower than that, therefore you don't exercise. So you then say 6 rand 75 plus 65, which is 7. See, 71, 75. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move. Unless if someone has a question. Now we are going to do what we call put call parity. Put call parity, we are left with about 16 minutes, so we are getting close to the end. Okay. Put call parity. When we talk of parity, it's easier to explain it in terms of, I don't know whether, I think it, most of you would have done E economics 101 by now. Parity is not equality. That doesn't make sense. The easiest question, the easiest explanation about parity might go this way. If you were a, if you worked for ShopRite here in South Africa, you would earn a certain level of salary maybe equal to which is possible for you to buy your food and pay your rent. If you, let's say, to working for ShopRite as a till operator, maybe let's say you earn about, maybe let's say 6,500, I don't know, it's just a guess. Okay, let's say 7,000 is the number, 7,000. If you were to go to America, to the US, and you also work for Walmart, same job, you are not going to get 7,000 rands. You are going to get about $2,500. If we convert $2,500 to rands, it is about 45,000 rands. 
But are we going to say the quality of life of a TU operator in South Africa is divided by 7,000? Is six times less than the quality of life of a TU operator in the States? We are not going to say that. They will live more or less similar type of lifestyle, more or less. They will struggle with similar things, struggle with fees to send their children to school because the TU operator in the U.S. is earning dollars and is spending in dollars. The TU operator in South Africa is earning in runs and spending in runs. So that whole thing to say there is a parity but parity is not equality, ladies and gentlemen. Parity is not equality. Because when we say $2,500 versus $7,000, it's not equality. But the lifestyle, those amounts of money they buy is similar. Oh, okay, time is moving. <laughs> time is moving. <laughs> time is moving, and I'm trying to explain parity. I'm not going to explain anymore. <laughs> time is moving. So when we say put co parity now, we are saying... If you hold a fiduciary call or a protective, protective, uh, a, a, a call which is, if you hold a call plus the present value of the strike price, you are the same as someone who is holding a protective push, put, which is who is holding the asset plus the put option. Don't worry about that theory. I just like to explain it that way. But no, Mr. Matima will never ask that question at all. I just like to ask, explain it that way so that I feel happy myself. Don't even worry. He might ask a question like this. <laughs> and what I want you to take note of, ladies and gentlemen, is this formula. This formula is a simple formula. This is the formula you're supposed to remember. There is no... There is... A, they, you are not supposed to have the form. You are not going to have the formula sheet in the exam. You are not going to have any formula sheet in the exam. Let's be clear about that, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to have a formula sheet in the exam. So you can memorize this formula. It is like a key to all the put call, put call parity questions. So it is saying this formula says a call C is the call option plus the present value of the strike price is equals to put option plus this formula is a key. Okay, so let's use the formula so that you can see how it works, how the key works. A price of a European coin has a strike price of 30 and expires in six months is, is two rand. The underlying share price is 29 and the risk free is 10%. Using put poor parity, what is the price of the European put? So what they want is the put that expires six months and there's a strike price of 30. Okay. So what do we do? We want P. So we take our formula there. So what is the call price? We are told call price with the strike price of 30 is two rand. So two, we see this C, the call price premium, plus what is the strike price? 30 is given here, divided by what is the risk-free? We are 10%. So we say 1 plus 0 0.1 to the power of Y, Y to the power of 0 0.5, because it expires in six months, equals to P, Put option premium plus, because that's what we are looking for, plus 29. Where is underlying shape the spot price is that one? 29. Then if you do this, 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 so you do your algebra, that jumps to there, 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 it gives you that. Deep you, don't even cry. So here is your question, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your question. And the formula is here. The key formula is here at the top. This is the formula you're supposed to put in your head. You can cry GPO, but no formula. Sheet. When I did in undergrad a few years ago, because remember I said I'm 20, 24. Ah, no, no, 27, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm 27. 27, a few years ago, maybe two years ago, <laughs> there were no formula sheets. When Mr. Matsuma did it a few years ago also, no formula sheet. So we, we are just pass, passing on the favor with no formula sheet. How did we get to 0.05? No, 0 0.5. This one. 
not 0 0.0, 0 0.5 was 6 over 12. Remember, this much was in six months. Uh, the problem, okay, let me, because I don't want to come out of it, but let me see if I can find a solution to that problem, which often happens, which often happens if I think I had enough, I can find, <laughs> even if I think I had enough, I, okay, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this. Let's try to do this. Okay, this to block the bonus question. Let's put it there. Okay, so that I can explain to the to the oh, Tembisa already is an answer. Oh, so now you are looking for the bonus question. Yeah, you can pause there, Tembisa. Okay, so the 0.5, ladies and gentlemen, the 0.5 was coming because six months. So remember, one plus r to the power of t, which is the time. So six over 12 is 0 0.5. That's why you have a 0 0.5 there. Okay, I'm going to remove that image so that the Tembisa can do the, the, the bonus question. And then she can run. Okay, bonus question. Okay, while you are doing the bonus question, Let's see your, your answer there if I agree with it. Yeah, Tembisa, I'm not agreeing with your answer. I'm putting this, this is a price person. <laughs> I don't agree with your answer. Maybe it's right, <laughs> because these calculations by it is sometimes they just go, go wrong. Ellen, you need you will need to have closing remarks very soon. As a leader, you have to close. Uh, okay, so Mr. Matsuma will say something, then you Ellen will have your closing remarks, and then you will we'll stop the recording. Then yeah, we can talk whatever we can say whatever we want to say after that. Okay, do the calculation. The formula is there at the top, ladies and gentlemen, which you can use. So one and a half minutes to your calculation. If you finish, if you feel like you finish, Tembisa, you can try your head on the next question. Israel, you can try your head on the next question, the bonus question. Okay, one and a half minutes, one and a half minutes. So I'm so happy I didn't show you that video because this we wouldn't have found this. We wouldn't have finished on time. We would be rushing like there's no tomorrow. Half a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Wandumzi. Israel. Big heart, big heart, big heart, big heart. I'm just giving big hearts. No more big heart. I'm just generous with these hearts. 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Sandy Le, hmm, thumbs up. Okay, so what I will do, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just quickly, why I'm showing this next slide is so that you on the recording, there is the answer on the recording so that we have an answer and then I'll go back to this, to this slide. Okay, so the correct answer is 8.71. 8.71. So now what do we do there? 5.04 is our C plus 55, which is given there, divided by 1 plus 0, 
0.5 because of the 5 percent here equals to p plus that equals to 504 plus that la 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 this gives you 871. Mr. Matoma, you can continue doing the calculation, ladies and gentlemen. What is Mr. Matoma say something? Oh, good morning, Dr. Yamunda, and good morning to our students. Uh, I could like to thank our students for taking their time to come to the class. As we know that uh, we only have a few weeks to exam. If I may ask, uh, did our student receive timetable yet? Helen, yes. you are the leader. You are supposed yes, to tell have. us, did you receive the timetable? GPO says yes. Yes, yes. Okay, they received. Okay, our exam will be on the 26th of May. So it's only three weeks from now. So uh, thank you very much for coming to these classes, as this will help you to like have a, a clue on how our exam will be. The structure of exam will have 40 questions, multiple choice, multiple choice questions. And uh, our question will be randomized. So I have 120 questions, which I have already put on the system. And uh, the system will choose for you 40 questions from 120. So the student might get uh, different questions altogether. So uh, let's prepare, let's take these classes serious and get ready for exam. I think I will, I will put uh, the structure on my, my, in writing on my UNISA. So you must just check during the week, it will be there. And let's come to, to I think we have uh, two weeks remain, two weekends remaining. So let's take this uh, classes serious and come next week and that other week, so we can prepare to, for our classes and uh, exam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nyamunda, for taking your time. I know you have so many commitments, but you you really take this this uh this job serious, and I can see that uh, the students are, are coming. Al although some of our students are not participating, but we don't know. We don't know uh, if they are prepared or not. So thank you for thank you all thank you to all the students who are here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. Helen is a leader. What's your closing remarks before we stop recording? Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, the lecturers and the colleagues. Um, I'd like to thank the lecturers of this module because they avail themselves uh, to make these online classes, even if uh, sometimes it's difficult for us to attend all of them. But I really appreciate because um, according to me, this semester, uh, it's the communication has been so bad with the university, some of the lecturers, but for this one, according to my side, um, I really appreciate the lecturers because they avail themselves, they communicate with us. And yeah, I really appreciate um, these classes and the videos that um, the professor provides us. Uh, we they help us a lot we do i do get i i do understand better when he provides those uh, videos thank you very much lecturers thank you so much and yeah that's all okay uh, i am just closing the 
stop the recording. Ladies and gentlemen, the recording is closed. No one is going to be recorded. It's free to ask any questions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, my leader. Thank you, our leader. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, can, can is, is Mr. Matsoma still there? Yes, I'm still here. Yes. So this is not a, a fight question, but it's really to understand um, why is it that you guys insist for us to remember 2011 uh, formulas? I mean, we can really, you know, get more intimate with the content if we literally did not have to recite all these. Like, why? <laughs> That's why we stopped recording. Okay, Mr. Matsoma, you can say whatever, because we stopped recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, 